Hello, I'm Tony Gaddis, and today I'm going to go over how I animated this little pig trying to get an apple in OpenTunes. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I did is created a new column and I create all uh, tunes raster levels for this project and I turned on the field guide and I just used the brush tool and I like to use this little 2B pencil over here and I just made a quick grid like one point perspective grid and then I created another column and this is what I did my rough animation on and so what I did is I started with my key poses. So I made a little note over here. I knew I wanted my animation to start around frame 11, right? Like a, I wanted a 10 frame hold. And so I start bringing him in on uh, frame 12. And this was my first key drawing. It was around uh, frame 45. Okay, and uh, I knew I wanted him to take a bite out of the apple. So he's going to anticipate up and then crunch, bite the apple, and it's going to fly out. And then uh, I just kind of imagined my head, it was going to bounce. And so you could do all of these drawings on ones, and that's typically what I do. I do all of my key poses. And then I will straight ahead from out of one pose into another pose. And sometimes that will change my key pose. Uh, but basically, um, I just get all my drawings down first. And then I start spreading them out on the timeline. And I animated this at 24 frames a second. Okay, so then I knew I wanted him to chew the apple. So between frame 69 and 115, he was going to chew and then look at it. And then he was going to take off running. And I had, I wanted him to, you know, reach the apple and start to like, you know, try to grab it. And it goes up into the air. So I marked that as a key pose at 145 by circling it. You know, as you start playing with your timing and spreading things out, I might have to erase this number and rewrite it later. So let's go to this key pose because I knew I wanted him to turn back and run fall and run the other direction from the direction he came. So this is his main pose that turns him. Okay. And then this is a key pose of him on the ground and then him coming over and then boom, he flips on his face. Do you feel that? And the apple bounces and he looks like, hey, I'm going to go get it. And then he takes off running and zooms off screen. Okay. I added the dust clouds on a separate column later. And I also separated the apple. I created a new column and called it apple. And as I animated, when the apple separated from his face right here, okay, so this is the pig column with the apple in his mouth. And then on frame 65, this is when I started animating the apple on its own column. That way I could hold it up in the air if I wanted to, I could stretch it and bounce it. And I could really kind of play with the timing and the rocking of this apple without having to worry about my pig drawings. Okay, I could uh, have the pig chew and do whatever he was going to do. And the apple could do its own thing. Okay, so here's a key drawing at 45 and up to 7, uh, 57. And so I, I knew I wanted him to like, uh, like shake his head. Uh, and so I just kind of started animating straight ahead up into that 57. 
And then I held it even longer before the actual bite down. Okay. Then he chews and he watches the apple bounce. And then here, this was a, a key pose. And so I just held it. And he immediately, boom, he starts to run, but his feet kind of slide. And so I just kind of straight ahead animated this on twos. And I just kept it real rough and loose. And I tried to get to that pose, okay? And a lot of times what I would do is turn on onion skinning like this to two frames ahead and two frames behind and just kind of see, you know, this really light red, that's where he's going into. And so I would try to follow these arcs to get him into that and coming out of that run, okay? And the same with up here. I wanted him to get up into 155 right here from 145. So then I just kind of started to look at my spacing and how I was going to twist and turn him. Okay, so then what I did is I collapsed this all down to a sub X sheet. Okay, so this is my rough sub X sheet right here. And what I did is I turned the opacity down and then I created a new column and I still use the, the same pencil. Uh, I, I still wanted that kind of sketchy pencil look, but just a little bit cleaner. And and then I just kind of started redrawing over my rough. So here's my cleaned up. So there's the rough and this is the more like clean lines. Okay. And I didn't have a model sheet or anything. I was just kind of guessing on what he might look like. Okay. So I just went through every frame. At this point, I drew the apple on the same frame just to keep it simple because I already animated it. I already knew where I wanted the apple to be and where I wanted to squash and stretch and what I wanted it to look like. So on this one, every drawing, everything's together. And this is where you can kind of, you know, play and like um, really kind of start to get your arcs nailed down a little bit more. Oops, like see here, I left off his, his arm, but that's okay. I think I fixed it on the color pass. Uh, well, there he falls. Okay, and right in here, you can see as I was animating for that anticipation up to that pose, he was kind of off model. So that's why the rough looks different. My rough, he was way smaller. Okay. And then again, the smoke and everything is on the same column, same level. Okay, so then what I did is I painted a background in Krita and I converted it to a black and white image and I just dragged that image into open tunes on its own column right here and let me hide my rough sub X sheet and so this is the background I brought in so now I have the background and a more like cleaned up pencil drawing. And then I took this pencil column and cloned all of the cells to create my color drawing. So what I did is if you select along the side 
it selects all your cells and then you can come up here to cells clone cells and you can name it and so now what i did is i went in to my original because i have two copies but i can edit each one individually okay so this one will be, the one on the right will be my official like line work. It's not going to change. It's going to stay there. And then the one on the left down here, I started creating different colors and using the paint bucket fill and wherever it didn't fill in, I would use this little paintbrush tool and fill it in like that. Okay, and then so I just went through every frame and did that. Okay. And when I when I had it all colored in, then I went back and was like, well, I think I want the apple a little more uh, desaturated. You know, something like this. And that color updates on every drawing. Okay. And I can hide that and I still have my my ink or my cleaned up pencil drawing. Okay. So I went through and colored all of it. And then I brought in my colored background. Okay. And so now my final render is basically just two columns. My colored background and my colored pig with the apple. And I used Piglet from Winnie the Pooh to uh, eye drop some of the colors just because I like how Piglet looks. And if you are using OpenTunes and have installed uh, FFmpeg, you can come up here to render and go to output settings and make sure you are rendering your line art and your color. And this is 291 frames and the start frame was one. And then you can tell it where you want to output it to and what format. So I'm going to do MP4 and then we can hit render or we can just come up here and do render, fast render to MP4. give it a second to render okay now we can go to our desktop and see our final animation okay that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it until next time happy animating and i'll talk to you later